What did you notice? Did you notice your mind wandering? Okay, great. It's normal, it's natural, it's supposed to do that. In fact, it's a symptom of creativity. The wandering mind is a creative mind, right? Okay. But did you notice what happened when you brought it back to this present moment? You know, you didn't notice? And did your mind wander? And what happened when you brought it back to the present moment? It made you smile. It made you smile. Okay, well that's okay. We can, we can cope with smiling, that's good. If you practice this, okay, for you mindfulness people, you know this, your consciousness is sharper, you'd be sort of like waking up to the present moment. It's very subtle, but you become waking up to the present moment. Now, so the idea then is your attention actually is, is by nature a wandering thing. It poles about in your mind all over the place, here, there, and everywhere. And the point about mindfulness is that most of us do not realize just how chaotic our minds are. And this amazing spotlight, which is so powerful, is just floating about. It's here, and then there, and then here, and then there. Okay, and the point about it is if you learn how to hold your mind, hold your attention, because this is where you exist, this is what you really are, this consciousness, uh, things get easier. Now the next thing is that Matthew Ricard says is that you make a distinction between the spotlight the nature of your consciousness from the content of your consciousness. Now this is a bit more tricky, but uh, his example is consciousness is like water. It can contain a medicine or a poison, but it is not the medicine or a poison. Uh, the spotlight of your mind can light on all kinds of things, but it's not the thing that it lights up on. And as you begin to do mindfulness more and more, you begin to realize that the content of your mind is different from the experience of being. That consciousness is actually empty. That is what it is, consciousness is empty. All of this stuff is biologically created content. You know, if you were a moth, or an ant doing mindfulness, you wouldn't have all the stuff going on that we've got. I mean, you'd have different, you'd have ant sort of stuff, right, you know. So content then, it's really, and content is all to do with the being an embodied being. Okay, now people say yes, but so is consciousness, awareness, and all that, and that's true. But the point is, we can be conscious of, and there's a big existential argument about consciousness can only exist when it is conscious of. That's John Sartre, Paul Sartre's argument. So, <clears throat> without going into this in too much more detail, the idea is then that your attention, the purity of your attention can go into many areas, can go into the shadows of your mind, into your rage, into your anxiety, into your sexual fantasies, or into the joyfulness. Ricardo said a very lovely thing to me the other day. He said, you know, your mind can create many, many alternatives, some of which are not very nice, some of which are nice, and it's about how you see that and learn how to choose where your attention is going to be. Remember, you can move it. We've just discovered that, right? You don't have to let it float around. You can practice moving. Okay, so the next thing then is with now that we understand about attention, now that we understand present moment, now that we understand wandering mind, all the exercises we're going to do, we're going to do mindfully. And that means if your mind wanders, it absolutely doesn't matter, just bring it back into focus. So, <clears throat> you see we go through this very quickly. So you've done all this, you don't need to do any of these retreats. We've done it in 10 seconds, it's amazing. Anyway. Okay.